Hi everyone. Now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, to help lead us in the first catechism, we have... Noah and Natalie. Take it away, you two. Hi, I'm Natalie. This is Noah and this is Macy. And today the first catechism is... What is the second petition? The answer is, Thy kingdom come. The second catechism is... What does it mean to pray thy kingdom come? We are asking God to bring more and more people to hear, believe, and obey his gospel. Bye! Bye. Thank you, Noah and Natalie, for teaching us about the second petition of the Lord's Prayer. And now... Let's review. Last week, we learned about the conversion of Saul. We learned that Saul was a Pharisee and he would persecute Christians. This meant that he would find and hurt anyone who believed and followed Jesus. Then one day, as he was traveling to a place called Damascus to find more Christians to persecute, there was a big bright light that surrounded him. Saul fell to the ground and a voice called out, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? After Saul asked, who are you, Lord? The voice replied, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. Saul ended up being blinded by the bright light and was led home by hand. Then God led a man named Ananias to go to Saul and pray for him and baptize him. Afterwards, Saul was now known as Paul, and he suffered greatly for Jesus. God used him mightily to share the gospel and write many books of the Bible that we read today. His life teaches us that God can save anyone, we should forgive others, and that we are all created for a purpose. And today, we are going to learn about Philip and the Ethiopian. The main points for today are 1. Obey God. Two, God knows best. And three, seek God. Our sermon text is Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your word. And I pray that as we learn from you, prepare our hearts to receive so that we may increase our understanding of you and grow in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, our story begins with a man named Philip. Philip was an evangelist and would share the gospel wherever he went. And then one day, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And so Philip started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch an important official in charge of all the treasury for the queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and is now on his way home. He was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Then Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The eunuch replied, how can I, unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The passage of scripture the eunuch was reading was Isaiah chapter 53, which talks about a person being led like a sheep to the slaughter and giving up his life for us. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in my way of being baptized? So he gave the orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again. But 
went on his way rejoicing. So the man from Ethiopia knew what the Bible said, but he did not know that the Bible is about Jesus. The Holy Spirit led Philip to help the man understand the good news about Jesus. That is that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he is alive. And now let's go over the main points. First point, obey God. When Philip received the call to go to the desert from God, I am sure it did not make much sense. He could have questioned or had some doubts about it. It is hard to know the future God has planned for us. We learn through scripture that obedience is better than sacrifice. Just like Abraham, Philip had faith to obey God and trust that he will provide what he needs. It is because of Philip's obedience that not only was the Ethiopian's eternal life saved, but history tells us that the same Ethiopian man led many other people in his country to Jesus. And that is great news. Point two, God knows best. We see that the timing of the Holy Spirit was perfect. This story teaches us that while it is good to wisely and prayerfully plan to share about Jesus with others, we also have to listen responsibly to the Holy Spirit to guide us to do something we might never even thought of doing, like going to the desert to share about Jesus. God led Philip to the Ethiopian man right when he was reading the book of Isaiah. God knew the exact moment the Ethiopian man would need help understanding scripture, which would then lead him to be saved from sin and start his new life in Christ. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8, God tells us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Point 3. Seek God this lesson teaches us that those who want to know God will find Him when seeking Him. The Ethiopian wanted to understand God's word and will better. At just the right moment, the Lord sent Philip to help the Ethiopian. Philip explained the scriptures and baptized the Ethiopian when God placed that desire in his heart. There is no place God will not go to get a hold of you. He will go far and wide for you. And the Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus and understand the Bible, but you do not think that you are able to, just call out to him and pray for his help. God wants us to know him and love him with all our hearts and minds. You are never too young or busy to learn about our Heavenly Father. Look how God used Philip in a unique way to be exactly what the Ethiopian needed at the right time. He wants to do that for you as well, so that you can help others to know and love our Heavenly Father. That is our main purpose as Jesus' followers, to love God, enjoy Him, and share His love and wisdom with others, so that they may do the same. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 tells us, to keep seeking God, and He will reward you, which is so worth it. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for teaching us about Philip and the Ethiopian. Help us to always listen and obey you in all that we do, especially when it doesn't make much sense. May your spirit continue to guide us and empower us to do your will. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. And now, let's get ready for praise. <laughs>